Beekman's World ran from 1992 to 1997. It had 91 episodes in just four seasons. I'm Jonathan. And I'm Crystal. And you've just broken into Garbage Horn. Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this is Garbage Horn out of the can for Beekman's World. Yeah. This show is super, mega, ultra, extreme 90s. I think that summarized it pretty well. Yeah. This is a kid's science show that, like I said in the intro, ran from 92 to 97, and thus it epitomizes everything you love and hate about that decade. <laughs> but I've, I've got to say, growing up, you were in one of two camps. Mm -hmm. You were either in the Bill Nye the Science Guy camp or the Beekman's World camp. And historically, largely because Bill Nye's had a very good continued presence. Right. The Bill Nye show has really overshadowed Beekman's world. Mm -hmm. And I think that's unfortunate. I love Bill Nye. I love right. his show. I love him as a human being. But I think Beekman's world deserves a little more credit than it gets. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a 90s show, but it was incredibly awesome and a lot of fun to watch. It was, and I think that it, they targeted different yeah. different kids, too. Mm -hmm. Beekman's World was the, the kids that you could probably talk into liking science, mm -hmm. while Bill and I was more for kids already interested in it. That's true, too. And I think one of the core differences is the lead character himself. Yes. Beekman. Beekman! Big, big surprise there. <laughs> Beekman's World stars Beekman. Oh. Which is played by Paul Salone. Uh, Paul Zalun, today is best known as a satirist and a puppeteer. He does a lot of visual art. Hasn't done shit in film or video, film or television since, though, unfortunately. Um, long story short, great guy, but not doing much else that you'd recognize him in, unfortunately. Right. And he has a sidekick, which stays the same through all four yeah, seasons. There's two sidekicks involved. The, the main one everyone remembers mm -hmm. is Lester, though. Yes. Lester stays the same. Yeah. He's played by Mark Ritz, right. who is a internationally renowned puppeteer. I had no idea there was a such thing, but there is. Very well-known puppeteer. Um, actually does a lot of the puppeteering work on the show itself, including mm -hmm. the Penguins that we'll right. discuss in a moment. Uh, he, unfortunately, uh, passed away in 2009. He's no longer with us. Yeah. And he really didn't do much as far as being an actor since then, but continued doing theater. Right. Oh, well, that was kind of his stick, was no, that he, could, he had a bad agent and he couldn't find another job. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, the character of Lester is he's a big guy stuck in a rat suit. He's the dopey comic relief. He's the guy whose job it is to get everything wrong and be kind of the comical punching bag for the other two. Pretty much. Yeah. Yep. If he were a meme, he's foul bachelor frog. He's stinky, smelly, crude. Uh, a lot of adult humor <laughs> comes from him. Yes. Very child inappropriate at times, but a lot of fun to watch. And then you had the rotating list of female assistants. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one was... Josie. Uh, Josie was season one. Yes, season one. She was played down, kind of a child figure in this. Yeah, she was supposed to be a ditz. She was uh, the kid. They repeatedly right. called her the kid throughout the show. And didn't really work. Because A, she's played by Alana Yubach. I'm hoping I'm saying that right. I'm probably totally muddling that. Mm -hmm. But she was 17 to 18 during that run. Right. She looked nothing like a kid. No, she didn't. She, and I mean, she played one fairly well. She played the ver Valley Girl very yeah, well. Yeah, she played the, 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 the ditzy Valley Girl yeah. very well. And that, that's actually a testament to Alana's uh, talent, though. She's right. a very talented actress and comedian. She's done a lot of different things since then. Uh, word to the wise, though, if you're looking up photos of Alana, keep safe search off. <laughs> just just a friendly tip <laughs> from those of us at the garbage horn. If you're at work, or if you're at home, <laughs> your choice. But um, if you're at work or somewhere, uh, safe search. Just keep on. it on, rather, Right. Uh, when you're doing that search. Um, but she... Had, yeah, <laughs> I, I really Go ahead. <laughs> but she's actually best known as being uh, Isabel from Meet the Fokker. She also, though, was on a... She played one of the comedians on uh, Louis Black's Root of All Evil. Mm. And a lot of other television work. She's got a very full IMDb presence, a lot of television work she's done. Mm -hmm. uh, for seasons two and three, so the lion's share of the time, right. goes to the character Eliza. Yes. Uh, Played by Eliza Schneider. It's Eliza, Eliza, you can see how that comes about. No, um, I can't. No. <laughs> Lester! <laughs> uh, 
She went on actually to have a very prominent voice acting role. A lot of video games, a lot of cartoons, a lot of TV shows, but everyone in the world is probably going to know her best for playing damn near every single female character in South Park. That includes the mayor, Cartman's mom, Wendy, uh, pretty much, you know. Uh, if there's a female, it's probably, it's probably Eliza. Uh, it's probably Eliza for at least the bulk of the show's right. run. Uh, she left the show more recently due to a uh, contract dispute. But long story short, if you've heard Cartman's mom's voice, you've heard Eliza in other roles. Mm -hmm. And the final one, season four, the last season, Phoebe. Yes. Uh, played by Senta Moses, uh, best known for being in My So Called Life as Delilah, Delilah Fisher. Mm -hmm. uh, once again, a lot of often on TV and voice acting roles as well. Mm -hmm. There's your cast. And basically, the whole show centers around the dynamic of Beekman, the super smart, super smart scientist, right. Lester, the bumbling idiot, gross you know, actor character, and the uh, sort of in between female assistant character right. and the comedy that ensues it's like a sitcom <laughs> within a science show right and every show followed roughly the same format mm -hmm. uh, there were oh every show opened with a brief segment with two penguins Don and Herb mm -hmm. uh, one of them was puppeted of course like we said by Mark Ritz and they would do a comedy shtick of some sort, very brief, very pun-oriented. Yes, lots of puns. Lots of jokes about being in Antarctica, being cold, mm -hmm. all that stuff. So yeah, you got a lot of humor from them. And then it would shift into a fast fact segment, mm -hmm. which Beekman would like, we do the intro, just give a fast, random fact that would oftentimes completely blow your mind and distract you during the opening credits. Mm -hmm. Then you would slip into the first letter. And one thing I liked about this show is they focused entirely on giving um, the time they could to the children's letters that wrote in. Right. I don't know if it still works, but if you watch it on Netflix now, they still have the P.O. box you can write into. Yes. No idea what happens if you actually write into it. And then it went into Big Mania. Yeah, that, that was an intro by the female assistant. Yeah. And then Beak Mania is basically a rapid fire lightning round of questions. Each has like a three word or one sentence answer. Yeah. And basically they pull the question out of the drum, answer it, done. Then they moved into our favorite segment, right? which is the challenge segment. Usually it was the Beakman challenge. Right. That involved Beakman challenging Lester to do something that seemed impossible. And Lester inevitably would fail or would succeed in a creative way like with the dumbbell yeah. one. Or he would just refuse because he was tired of looking like an idiot yeah. on TV. They, they didn't really <laughs> played that actor in a rat suit, disgruntled actor thing up to a T. Yeah. This is one of the, I come on national <laughs> television <laughs> every week and get humiliated. And yeah. <laughs> they played that pretty good. But they did have some alternative skits too. Uh, mm -hmm. Lester Challenge, where Lester would try to turn the tables on Beekman. Right. Uh, Arts Diner. Yes. Uh, which involved a greasy spoon chef. Yeah. I didn't like that one, to be I honest. Really like and sometimes either. they'd have one off skits, like going to a doctor or something like that, as right. well as a school nurse sketch and so forth. Um, then they would leave into the second letter of topic. Mm -hmm. Then another fast fact, and then more penguins. And the penguins, of course, being interspersed throughout. Yeah, especially if there was a question about Antarctica. Or anything cold or fish related or penguin related. Yeah. Like when uh, one of the big many questions was, do penguins have knees? Yeah. Penguins shouting, hey, that's awfully personal. Yeah. <laughs> Type of thing. And they would, they were kind of like the uh, creepy old guys from the Muppets. Yeah. Think of them like that. They're chiming in with puns and insults as they go. Mm -hmm. But it's a very fast paced, very in your face, a lot of extremeness to it, you know, you would expect from a 90s TV show. But it is so much fun. It is, and it actually did teach some principles and get kids interested in science. Yeah, the main thing of the show wasn't, I think, to teach science, because I don't think you can really teach with something this, you know, fast-paced. But it got kids interested in thinking about science. It made science look cool and mm -hmm. look interesting. Right. Which is something that was very difficult to do. I love the demos. Okay. It's still difficult to do. It's still difficult to do. It's especially difficult to do now with all the distractions. I mean, yeah. you would think with all the technology around us, science would be just like the most exciting thing in the world. <laughs> How does a computer work? How does the camera we're talking into work? How Magnets! How do they... <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> and I'm just now on the death wish list for Insane Clown Bossy fans. But <laughs> Well, now you are. No, I am. <laughs> You've just stealed that one. <laughs> 
But long story short, it was it was a show that design, was designed to get kids engaged and had really layered humor. Right. Yeah, there was a lot of adult humor. Yeah, I mean, the, there was one episode where Lester got a call from a sex line. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty amusing, and they really would work in a lot of adult jokes that if... I mean, Roy G. Bibb, one of the characters. Yeah. The hippie stoner character that, that represented how light works. <laughs> they got a lot of subtle pot humor in with him. Oh, uh, yeah. Always got smoke around and stuff like that. Yeah. Very, very subtle. If you're not if you're not over the age of, like, 16 or so, it's going to go right over your head. Yeah. But if you're an adult, you're going to be laughing your ass off the whole time and wondering how the hell that's on a kid's show. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so, I mean, look. If you got a kid, you want to get him interested in science, Beekman's World is in Netflix right now for right. free on instant streaming. Yes. Recommend it. We're highly recommend it. And if you're an adult, check it out. If you love punny humor, this show has a ton of it. Yeah. And if you have the, uh, the ability, take a laptop with Netflix streaming mm -hmm. to a park and just show as many kids as you can. Yeah. I mean, get, <laughs> we need kids in science. Get kids to watch the show. Get kids to watch Bill Nye, too. I'm not yeah. dissing Bill Nye here oh, no, at all. No, no, no. Bill Nye, excellent show. This one's just really easy to watch on Netflix. Right. But get kids as interested in science as you can. This is the type of show to do. We don't get a lot of shows like this anymore that mm -hmm. I know of. I mean, this was on CBS. This was network television. Mm-hmm. They don't do that much anymore like this. Not this high energy, high budget, high production value no. that geared solely toward getting kids interested in science. Yeah. And it's sad. Yeah. I would like to see more shows like Beekman. The one thing that does kind of ruin it, really fast, Beekman does have the Brooklyn, Jersey Shore, New Jersey style accent. Back in the 90s, that was hilarious. Yeah. Jersey Shore fucking ruined that, okay? <laughs> It's a reason, that's another reason the show should not One exist. of many Snooky, uh, everybody on the show. Yeah. Basically. I find it funny that's the only one you can name. I, Vinny I something or another. Um, but that's thanks to my coworkers. The situation, that's one, that's someone on the show. Yeah. Um, I'm out. Uh, that's all I got. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be disappointed if you had more. <laughs> <laughs> I just know the ones that Reddit talks about. But long story short, he does have the accent. Please don't judge him or the show based upon that. No. Different era for that accent. Right. Okay, totally different. Mm -hmm. Well, any final thoughts on Beekman's World? No, that's it. Well, like I said, this show is extremely 90s, extremely extreme, extremely, extremely extreme. So, so you're saying it's extreme. It's very extreme. It's extreme and hardcore. It's very, very 90s. It's like a little time capsule. If you're a child in the 90s, even if you never saw this show, you're going to recognize everything in it. Right. Well, on that note, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this, is, this was Garbage Horror out of the can for Beekman's World. Ooh. You can stop it.